Coming up tonight, our news is in Rwanda, just ahead of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Our Jerome Sawyer is on the ground. Friends, family and classmates of Alethea Newbold pay tribute to her at a candlelight vigil. And good news from the Bahamas Humane Society. And even happier news for a once abused dog who has just landed in the Big Apple. our news and thank you so much for joining us a special happy father's day to all i'm megan shepherd imagine if you will hundreds of young people sharing their solutions for global issues in education climate change economics and technology with world leaders well that process has started through the commonwealth youth forum the three-day gathering of young people from over 50 commonwealth countries is just ahead of the gathering of world leaders for the commonwealth heads of meeting in rwanda this week our jerome sawyer reports from the rwandan capital of kigali are you doing what is necessary to create your future or you leave it to chances. It couldn't be a more fitting question for a room full of young people representing the 54 countries of the Commonwealth. <laughs> Out of the 2.4 billion people living in Commonwealth countries, 60% are under 29. In fact, one in three young people in the world between 15 and 29 live in the Commonwealth. That's reason enough for another Commonwealth Youth Forum, the 12th to be specific. Leading the Bahamian delegation in Kigali, Rwanda, is a minister with youth as his portfolio. And you know, some of the challenges that we face, like climate change and others, is, is impacting all of us. And so definitely this allows all of us to put our minds together and come together and, and come up with creative ways, innovative ways on how we can uh, involve the youth and improve life for all of us. Two years of COVID-19 created the largest disruption in history in education. Add to that fears of another global recession, climate change, economic inequality and a growing digital divide and you've got a list of discussion topics for this year's forum here in Kigali. The Bahamas has two youth delegates here. This is Rashad Ritchie's second forum. Having to switch from in-person learning to online learning, the issues with connectivity, etc. However, I would say that it also presents an opportunity to expand the way that we see education and the way that we uh, move away slightly from informal education and develop new ways of learning, finding new ways uh, to engage our young people. His counterpart, Shaquel Sands, is looking for opportunities for more advocacy groups back home. So far, I've spoken to several youth council presidents and they've already given me a lot of information and a lot of food for thought in strengthening our own youth council. I think that is a major step for us to really push advocacy in the Bahamas. Kendall Vincent is chairperson of the Caribbean Youth Council. It's employment and opportunities for our region that are capturing his attention here. We're very tourism based as well, so all those young persons who would have worked in the tourism sector, so I see employment and um, opportunities, but I think COVID also gave us the opportunity to retool and to build back better. Along those same lines, Minister Mario Boleg is on the speaker's agenda tomorrow here at the CYA. Now we understand his presentation highlights two successful young Bahamian entrepreneurs who have done well in spite of the challenges presented by this common and global pandemic. In Kigali, reporting for our news, I'm Jerome Sawyer. Thank you so much for that, Jerome. Meantime, squad is living on Crown land in Carmichael area have 14 days before the government steps in. That, according to National Security Minister Wayne Monroe, who toured the well fields on Friday. The area features illegal excavation sites, rather, and illegal coal-making operations. He was also shown an illegal gun range. You would hear now that it's not only a matter of when we started um, social service, people in need, um, to persons trespassing on government property, but there are issues of national security involved. And that is why you would see we're doing this to see ourselves, why we're engaging the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Monroe also spoke to a family living in a school bus. He made it clear they did not have the right to be on the land, but promised they would receive help from social services. Over at the illegal gun range, Monroe 
cemented the discovery of several rounds of 5.56 caliber ammunition. We'll also be engaging Department of Immigration. Um, whenever the national security of this country is affected, we have to respond robustly and rapidly, and that is what we intend to do. The largest island in the Bahamas is making an impact on the tourism landscape as one of the first family islands to exceed pre-pandemic arrival figures. Acting Director of the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, Latia Duncombe, making the revelation during the 2022 Andrus Business Outlook. Andrus is among the first islands of the Bahamas to surpass pre-pandemic visitor arrivals. In 2019, Andrus welcomed more than 9,000 visitors. Two years later, into the tourism recovery and rebound, and at the end of 2021, Andrus registered more than 12,000 visitors, the highest in its history. That is 30% more than 2019 arrivals. So how was it possible? Duncombe says mainly due to the development of luxury resorts, strategic marketing, and the pandemic itself, which she says awakened the world to the appeal of the Bahamas' largest island. The secret is now out. Andros, a pristine wonderland of countless blue holes, superb diving, fishing, birding, hunting, forests, fishing flats, and Great Barrier Reef is indeed a mecca for adventure travelers and those seeking social distancing. She says global adventure travel market will be worth $2.02 billion by 2030. The Ministry of Tourism is looking to fully tap into that market through a community-based tourism cluster project focusing on flats fishing, birding, and adventure travel markets that dominate nature-based travel in the region. And more news from the Andrews Business Outlook, carbon credits and ecotourism taking center stage as member of Parliament for Mango Key in South Andrews, Leon Lundy delivered the keynote speech reminding Bahamians how rich Andrews really is. The island of Andros boasts the largest carbon sink in the country. In the face of rising seas, more intense storms and the acidic waters that put fragile reefs at risk, and pose major coastal hazards for low-lying areas on Andrus. the investment into climate change mitigation is a favorable prospect. Lundy is describing a carbon sink, an area that absorbs and stores carbon. The new Climate Change and Carbon Market Initiatives Bill 2022 lays the framework for government to structure climate financing through the sale and transfer of carbon credits. Lundy, who was also the parliamentary secretary in the office of the prime minister, says carbon markets will create job opportunities and funnel funding back into the maintenance of forests, mangroves and seabeds. The creation of a carbon market will involve not only technocrats, but educators, scientists and other specialists who will guide the implementation of innovative technologies in this arena. Still to come, Foreign Minister Fred Mitchell says that's all scrapped as he refers to the lifted ban on travel to Haiti. And Sri Lanka wants a four day work week that's coming up in our World Headline segment. Look out for it with our news weekend edition returns. Megan Betha, and I would just like to wish a happy Father's Day to all the fathers of the Cable Bahamas group of companies and all the fathers around the Bahamas. A special shout out to my dad, I have two, Sheldon Bethel and Salute Innocent. 
every father out there in the Bahamas and within the cable group of companies, happy Father's Day. So touching from my namesake. Meantime, the Davis administration is planning to build a new school for performing arts. Prime Minister Philip Davis stresses the importance of pumping resources into the orange economy. A new school for the performing arts yes. will produce a new generation of Bahamian creatives yes. who will benefit from the investments being made in the orange economy. A key part of the Davis administration's mandate is to develop the colorful economies. The orange economy is one of them. Since coming to office last September, the Davis administration has repeatedly said it intends to diversify that sector. Theater, film, television, architecture, design, performing arts. I know Bahamians can excel in all these areas if they have the right education and the opportunities. Yeah. Education can be a great equalizer, but only if we invest in it. A ban on travel to Haiti lasting for quite some time has been scrapped, according to Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell when speaking to Our News recently. The original ban on Haiti in February was explained as a decision to block travelers for three weeks as Haiti celebrated Carnival. At the time, few countries in the region had began vaccination campaigns prior to the ban. The Bahamas had regular direct flights to Haiti. That's all scrapped and the embassy is open again in Haiti. Uh, we're going to a point, we have, um, the place is fully staffed up, but we uh, have no ambassador. Uh, the Prime Minister will uh, seek to appoint someone, I would guess, within the next two months. Iceland and the United Kingdom are catching up with other countries in the world who are exploring shorter work weeks aimed at boosting worker productivity and happiness. However, in crisis hit Sri Lanka, the concept of a shorter work week is more about coping with crippling food and fuel shortages. Struggling with the shortages amid its worst economic crisis in decades, the South Asian country recently announced to public sector, sector workers will be given Friday off for the next three months without a cut in pay. This will allow them time to grow their own crops. Sri Lanka's Department of Government Information said it seems appropriate to grant government officials leave of one working day to engage in agricultural activities in their backyards or elsewhere as a solution to the expected feud shortage. The shorter week will also benefit workers affected by power cuts and transport disruptions caused by the food and gas shortages. There are an estimated 1 million public sector workers in the country. And when our news comes back from the break, a candlelight vigil for young Alethea Newbold, who lost her life in a recent plane crash. And now a happy pitbull with a very happy ending. Stay tuned. We have the details when our news weekend edition returns. And I'd like to wish all of the fathers in Cable Bahamas and across the country a happy Father's Day. We know you feel it's often overlooked, but we appreciate you and we need you. So relax yourself and enjoy your day on Sunday. Thank you. We love you. It's definitely all love from us here at Rev and Our News. Warrior King, reggae artist, revolutionary, and father, cited as one of former U.S. President Barack Obama's favorite artists, lives his life to spread positivity and pure messages that uplift the common man. Join our Gene Joseph as he reasons with the Rastafarian entertainer before he performs tonight at Reggae Sumfest Sundays. Greetings. I'm Warrior King. I'm a regular artist from Kingston, Jamaica. 
It's a pleasure to be here. Warrior King, acclaimed by former U.S. President Barack Obama for his hit song Virtuous Woman, originally planned to become a dancehall artist. But as he grew older, his mindset shifted, eventually leading to him taking a more spiritual stance. Doing music as a youth, my initial vibration when I started out as an artist is to change the mind of people. And when I see that, like President Barack Obama, listen to my music and acknowledge me as one of his favorite artists. And um, one of my songs, Virtuous Woman, is his favorite song of all time. It's good because when no music inspires leaders and leaders who lead people, that, that, can be a great, that can cause great change in the world. Warrior King, a Rastafarian, shares his positive message regardless of religion, race or creed and prides himself on being a beacon of hope for all. The Mabas in Africa, Aluta continues. That means the struggle continues. So as long as I have breath in my body, I have to keep that positive energy going because there's always a war between good and evil going on. But then music are in just a normal daily life. life. So I think I was born to, 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 to take up this task and to carry this load um, to be a, a beacon of light to the world. Because if Warrior King can inspire one person, that's great enough for me. Because one person can inspire a million. So that's wonderful for me. It's not about the hype, it's about giving a message and giving the positive energy on and off stage. The King has this to share with other fathers as he prepares to hit the stage for his Reggae Sumfest concert appearance. When we day Obama's I wanna vibe on June the 19th, it's gonna be Father's Day, Mother's Day, Family Day, it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good night. If you miss Warrior King at the National Stadium, follow him online for his upcoming releases. Reporting for Art News, Arts and Entertainment, I'm Gene Joseph. Yeah, yeah. Woman time now. What the first Thank you so much, Gene. And to my producer, Tanya, who got a special serenade, I'm jealous. Meantime, in other news, a life cut short in a tragic plane crash on Long Island was celebrated this past week. The former classmates of Alethea Newbold gathered on the South Beach Community Park to share precious memories and pay tribute to the young mother, sister, and friend. No matter what you're going through, remember God. God is using you. While the circumstances were brought on by tragedy, the 2018, 2015, and 2012 classes of C.H. Reeves came together to pay tribute and celebrate the life of the late Alethea Newbold. The 22-year-old's mother, sister, and friend perished in a plane crash recently while traveling from Long Island. Her former classmates hosted a candlelight vigil in her memory. And I was always the one that nobody ever wanted to hang around. And the first, the very first time I met her, the first thing she said to me, was, she complimented me. She was like, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a long skirt because you come here to learn and I don't have anything to do with your education. As young as she was, she said that. So this is basically a, a tribute. I, I'm doing this from the depths of my heart because of the little memory that she has, that she left with me, the little impact that she had on my life from the six years that we school and then on to adulthood, it, it definitely changed me. And it definitely is, I could safely say she's the reason why I have the self-esteem that I have now. You were so good for this awful world. You was a good friend, a good confidant, a good daughter, and a great mother. You were a person everyone who wanted to reckon with. You were beautiful inside and out. I am saddened death snatched you from us helplessly. Alethea has always been a very selfless, nice person. And what I really loved about her was, you know, she was never mean and she was very goofy and she would always tell me, you know, no matter what people say, don't answer people and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm going to always cherish the memories that I have with her. Now, while the family has already paid tribute to, mourned the loss of and celebrated the life of Alethea, they also took part in the candlelight vigil. Newbold's family members say they appreciate her former classmates for their initiative in celebrating her life. Lady was a funny person. She was full of life. You couldn't come around and be bored. She was always full of laughter, smiling. She just was a joyful person. She was never um, a bad person or messy. She just was full of life, very positive. It really wrap us up because this was un unexpected, seeing that she just had an infant. So it, it really hurt us because this, this was a blow. 
nothing expected, at least not right now. We don't want y'all to forget her, okay? She is not just a name. She was a person. She was loved by many. She had vision. She had plans. She had dreams. Her daughter will never get to know her. Besides what we could teach and help her with. Her aunt, Rita Cartwright, says this is a tough one for the family and she is calling for more support. She was a mommy only child. She was a daddy only child. Sorry and my condolences just ain't enough. You know, sometimes people need that shoulder to lean on. Sometimes people need to know that people really care and not just say they care because she was a person and she ain't here no more. And that could have been any one of y'all who was on that plane who ain't here no more. And y'all parents would have been mourning just like I'll be mourning. So we just don't want y'all to forget her. We don't want y'all to forget her. We don't want y'all to forget her. Six months, baby. Who can come up without a mother? South Beach Member of Parliament, Bacchus Roll, also paying tribute to Newbold. And no matter how we believe we can be prepared, we can never really prepare for death. This type of tragedy, I would go so far as to say is a national tragedy. But my heart goes out completely to this family. Having been constituents here in the South Beach uh, constituency, we will continue to pray. We will continue to reach out to them. During this time of testing and bereavement, on the behalf of my wife, the constituency, and I think the country at large, we want to say we love you, we support you, and uh, we will continue to keep you in our prayers. Her father, overcome with emotion, only able to express his gratitude briefly. I appreciate it very much. I'm coming here for my daughter and everything. And like I say, thank you all very much. My heart. Thank you. Now her young daughter, parents and grandparents were all present at the vigil. A moment of silence was held to pay respect as well. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. And we extend condolences to the entire Newbold family, especially to her father and her daughter's father as they mourn on this Father's Day. And still to come, the weather forecast to help you plan your Father's Day evening. And the Big Apple welcomes White Boy, a happy pit bull who just landed in the city looking forward to a new start. Stay tuned for the details when our news weekend edition returns. Some advice and we hope you're having a great Father's Day so far but up next is your weather forecast to help you plan the rest of your week. Marcellus Hall has the latest on our Bahamian athletes who recently competed in the Paris Diamond League 2022. 
Welcome to Our Sports Sunday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. Busy day for our track and field athletes in Paris as uh, both Shawnee miller Weibo and Stevie Gardner getting it done. Taking a look at uh, Stevie, Stevie Gardner, first of all, he powers through to a first place finish in the men's 400 meters, 44.21 seconds. A good time for him getting it done. Meanwhile, Shawnee miller Weibo also getting a victory in the women's 400 meters. See her here cruising across the line. They both get it done in Paris. Again, outstanding performances for both of those young gentlemen as gentlemen and lady as Paris meet continues. We did have another good finish in the 100 meter hurdles as Devin Charlton comes through with a second place finish, a season's best time for her. Looking strong, we'll give you full details on all three of these athletes' performance in Paris coming up for you tomorrow. That's your Sunday Sports Check. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you. And once again, congratulations from the Hour News team to those Bahamian track athletes in Paris claiming top place finishes recently. Now, the Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, Mario Bolek, is in Rwanda attending the Commonwealth Youth Forum. While there, he spoke to Hour News and extended congratulations to the world-class athletes that continue to make us proud. Not surprising, you know, and I'm expecting them to continue to improve as we move towards the World Championships, which can be held in Oregon next month. I, you know, I got a text from uh, Miss Charlton, who was keeping me up the breast while I was traveling on those long flights. So I was very happy to see them, and I sent message to congratulate all them, and I want to personally congratulate them on their performance thus far, and to continue doing what they're doing. And I'm expecting to see even greater awards in the World Championships coming Oregon. And how did an abused pit bull make it from the streets of Nassau to the Big Apple? Marlena Leonard shares the story of White Boy in this report. In the early hours of April 1st, 2022, Bahamas Humane Society President Kim Arana was awakened by a call from an unknown number. The woman on the line shared that she had spotted a dog in desperate need of help. But because the caller was on her way to work, she couldn't stop to help the dog. She did, however, share pictures of him and his location. It was very fortunate because the Humane Society ambulance was at the office. They were able to jump into the ambulance, drive out there, and they got him back to the shelter within a, an hour of the phone call. So one very important factor here is to show that you don't have to do much to start the ball rolling to save a life. The BHS worried the dog, who would come to be known as White Boy, wouldn't last the night. While he was well fed, he was near death. They obviously tried to cut his ears off with one of these, um, you know, do it at home uh, efforts, which is very painful for the dog. And the dog had a dreadful infection. He had living maggots on the side of his face and in his ear that clearly came from the fact that that wound had not been treated. He was covered in very, very dangerously deep bite wounds down as to the bone in some places. So he'd been in a bad fight. Was he used as a bait dog, which some people use to train their dogs to be fighters? Or did he just get into a fight? I, I don't know. But White Boy did last the night, and then the weekend. His wounds needed round-the-clock attention, and his condition was far too fragile to be sent out for foster. Up until now, we've always felt that badly injured or very sick dogs could not recover well in a shelter atmosphere. We decided that what we do is bring the nurturing and the love to the shelter. So his vet, Dr. Martina, took great care of him and the staff would stop by and give him a little biscuit or talk to him. And we do try to do that with all our animals, but when you've got an awful lot, it's hard to do it individually. So I set up with myself and other volunteers to go in and visit him. And it was just a question at the beginning, he was so weak, of sitting on a blanket with him, reading a book and just stroking what bits of his body weren't injured. Over the next eight weeks, the BHS worked with an American organization, the New York Bully Crew, which offered to help get White Boy access to specialists in America and help select a new home for him. Everything else fell into place when a generous foreign resident traveling with their family offered White Boy a ride to his new life in New York. White Boy took an immediate liking to New York Bully Crew member Janelle Santana and is already blending in nicely with his new foster family at home with NYBC founder Craig Fields. On White Boy's method of in-shelter socialization, BHS president says she deems it a success and would use the volunteer-based method in future. Overall, it was a great, great success and we will do it again. And we're looking for volunteers 
to uh, to join us in this endeavor. For more on White Boy, you can check the social media pages of Our News, the Bahamas Humane Society, or the New York Bully Crew. Reporting for Our News, I'm Marlena Leonard. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Marlena. And thank you so much for joining us for Our News Weekend Edition. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. And before we head out, we want to wish a special happy Father's Day to all men across the country, especially the fathers here at Rev. And of course, I'm biased into the world's greatest dad to me, my dad, Virgil Shepard. Happy Father's Day. We hope you continue to enjoy your weekend with your loved ones.